Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to do an update on the mining system that we've been working on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the new things that I've added to it, and then we can take a look at the scripts. So the first thing I changed was giving the player a set number of swings before the tool breaks. So every time the player's tool hits the rock, it reduces the transparency a little bit. And then after a while, the tool will break. Okay, so there we go. Our tool is broken. The next thing I changed was moving the resources from the leader stats over here to a side menu. So let's go around and collect our materials. And you can see on the side there, it keeps track of what materials I have. We can still go over to the green pad to sell our materials. And now it appears as money over here in the leader stats. I also added a simple shop system that allows you to buy a new tool by clicking on the buy button here. And then once you have your new tool, then you can go back to mining. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so in this video, I'm going to go through the scripts and explain what they do. I'm also going to have all the scripts linked in the description so that you don't have to try to copy it down while you're trying to understand what's going on. So let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to start by taking a look at the script that's underneath the tool. So this is a script that's underneath our mining tool here. So the main purpose of this script is to produce a resource whenever the tool strikes the rock. To get the tool to break after a certain number of swings, I defined a variable called swings left, and I set it equal to 10. And 10 would be the amount of swings the player gets before the tool breaks. And then every time the tool strikes the rock, what I'm going to do is subtract 1 from that variable, and also reduce the transparency by adding some small amount to it. And then down here at the bottom, once that variable gets less than 1, I'm going to destroy the tool. This section right here is what produces the resource, and down here at the bottom, this is what produces that swing animation. If you want a more detailed explanation of these, I'll have a video linked in the description. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to move the resources from the leader stats over to a side menu over here. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at how to set up that side menu. So under the starter GUI, you'll need to add a screen GUI, and then you'll need to add a frame, and I named this frame pop-up. Inside of this frame is going to be different labels for the different resources. And then this is the local script that controls the pop-up menu. This is a very simple script. All it's doing is whenever the player clicks on the button, it's going to either open it or close it. I also have a video on this, which I'll link in the description if you want to learn more about this. Next, we're going to take a look under server script service. So before, this is where we set up the leader stats to keep track of all the different resources. Now, all it's going to keep track of is the money up in the top right-hand corner. What we're doing different this time with the resources is instead of setting the parent to leader stats, we're going to set it equal to player. So all these resources will still be linked to the player, but they just won't show up in the leader stats. And next, we're going to take a look at the script under the server storage, and this is the script that gets attached to the part when it gets created from the rock. Next, we're going to take a look at the script in the server storage, and this is the script that gets attached to the resource once it pops out of the rock. So quickly going back to the tool script real quick, once it produces that material, what it's doing, it's making a copy of that script in the server storage, and it's attaching it to that part. So what we're looking at under server storage is the script that gets attached to the part once it comes out of the rock. The new thing that we added with this is instead of adding value to the leader stats, we're going to add that to the label under the pop-up menu. So all these different things here where it's assigning values to a label, it's talking about the labels in my pop-up menu. And we're doing that by starting with the player and then going to their GUI, and then their pop-up screen GUI. And then we're referencing the label separately. So for this one, it's for the rock label. And then we're setting its text equal to the string rocks. And then combining that with the rocks value. This rocks value here will be an int value that gets assigned when the player joins the game. And that comes from the script under the server script service. So when the player joins the game, it's getting all these new int values. And then over here on this script is where we're changing those values. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the shop system. So to set up the little menu for the shop system, what you need to do under the starter GUI is we're going to add another frame, and I call this one shop. Inside the shop frame will be different items that you want inside your menu. So I have different things like text labels for the different titles, and I also have a buy button when you want to buy the tool itself. And then we can take a look at the local script now. So inside this local script here, these two functions control the opening and closing of the menu. And I have a separate video on how to do that, which will also be linked in the description. And finally down here, this function triggers a remote event, which gets handled by a script under the server script service. And what this script is doing, it's taking a look at the player's current money. And it's seeing if the current money is greater than the tool price, which basically means the player has enough money to buy the tool. 
And if the player has enough money to buy the tool, then it's gonna subtract the price of the tool and then give the player the tool. So I know I went kind of quick on this video and it was meant to just be an overview of the new things that I added to it. If you guys want more detail on anything in particular in this video, just leave a comment and I can make a separate video on that. Like I said before, I have a video already on how to set up the side menu here and also the shop menu. But if you guys have any other questions or you want me to do another video on any particular topic in this video, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll be glad to do that. This is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.